Welcome to the Second Drafts podcast, everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. I'm Jeremy, and today I'll be talking about villains. Unfortunately, Ethan wasn't able to join us today, but he will be back for future podcasts. Speaking of future podcasts, I just want to give a quick update on the release dates. If you've been following us regularly, first off, thank you. (laughs) And secondly, you might have noticed that there wasn't a podcast this past Friday, and this one today here is on a Monday. Now that we've got a few podcasts under our belt and that we're in the new year, Ethan and I figured we just slowed things down a little bit. We're both working hard on our own writing, editing, etc., and we just want to give ourselves the time to continue to work on those, but also still be able to do the podcast. So from now until some point in the future, we'll be doing one podcast every two weeks instead of every week. So sorry about that if uh, you were looking forward to hearing from us weekly, but alongside the tutorial videos, uh, there's going to be definitely weekly content on the channel, and that will be on every Monday. So today's topic there, uh, we're talking about villains. So kind of what we uh, like about them uh, and what we can kind of learn from uh, other villains from other novels and etc., so, in general, uh, with your writing, you are going to have, of course, your main heroes, as well as the villain who's going to face them. Uh, it doesn't always have to be a person, but usually it is. So, let's first start off by talking about uh, why villains and why well-developed villains are important. The first benefit is, of course, that uh, it's going to be more satisfying for the audience, Uh, when your hero eventually, of course, prevails, if you've made a good villain to counter. There's nothing worse than an underdeveloped character, and making a villain who the audience, you know, loves to hate is just like creating a great character. The second point is that having a good villain helps in building your world and make it more believable. Not everyone is obviously going to agree with your hero, so depending on the setup of your story, The villain or the antagonist might even be a person who is very close to the hero, such as uh, Captain Ahab in Moby Dick. Uh, So Ishmael there was one of the passengers on the ship uh, who helped out, and Captain Ahab is kind of seen as the villain in some, uh, some people's thematic breakdown of the story of Moby Dick. So villains are definitely very important, and they're often neglected when it comes to creating stories, and I'm definitely guilty of that as well. So hopefully today we'll be able to explore a couple villains that are good examples of what to do when creating one. Hopefully that'll help you and I in our own stories. So for my villains, I chose one uh, which you might all know, and that's Javert from Les Miserables. Sorry if I butcher the pronunciation there on that. So uh, what I feel makes uh, Javert interesting is that if it were a different story, he would probably be the protagonist, which makes him a great villain because by the end of the story you should hopefully feel for him and uh, understand his character a little bit more, why he did the things that he did. Uh, for those who don't know, Les Miserables is a novel written by Victor Hugo, and it's been adapted into a very famous musical and movie, uh, all of which I've seen several times and enjoyed quite a bit. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you should at least see one of them, because they're definitely uh, very classic in uh, the best sense of the world. In the best sense of the word, sorry. <laughs> so, in Les Miserables... It mainly follows the life of Jean Valjean, a good-natured criminal who first steals because he needs to feed his sister. Javert is an inspector who becomes obsessed with chasing down and prosecuting Jean Valjean. The author, Hugo, stated this about Javert, that he is of two sentiments, simple and good in themselves, but he made them almost evil by his exaggeration of them. Respect for authority and hatred of rebellion. He also said that he is absolute and a fanatic. 
So basically, he is a fanatic about justice and the pursuit of justice. So for anyone who wants to read the novel or uh, watch the musical and don't want any spoilers, just skip this next part as I'm just going to give a quick rundown of what happens to Javert. And we'll be going over uh, pretty much his whole role in the novel. So, so throughout their encounters, uh, Javert sees Jean Valjean's uh, good nature, but he almost kind of ignores it and still continues his pursuit. Uh, it comes to a head when Jean Valjean has Javert's life in his hands. But instead of killing Javert and getting away scot-free, Jean Valjean spares him. This causes turmoil inside Javert because he still felt that Jean Valjean was a bad person up until that point. After Javert has the chance to capture Jean Valjean, he lets him go in return for sparing his life. But because of his convictions and, again, that absolute and fanatic uh, relationship to justice, he can't deal with his own actions of letting uh, Jean Valjean go, and so he commits suicide over his guilt of that. So, as I mentioned, uh, Javert could easily be the main character if the story setup was just a little bit different. You see a lot of character development from him, and he's arguably one of, mo one of the most tragic characters of the story. When it comes to making a great villain, the best advice I feel we can take from Les Miserables would be to try and make your villains like any other character, even like they were a protagonist. They should have a complex personality, a good backstory, a story arc that involves the main characters, and hopefully they should be relatable. Uh, there's nothing worse than someone unbelievable, especially in a straight historical or contemporary setting. Uh, with sci-fi, fantasy, paranormal genres, uh, those are a little bit easier to have uh, unbelievable villains because the audience is kind of already expected to suspend disbelief. It's certainly not necessary to do this as there are many ways to make villains, but it's definitely a good option to consider to have them almost be another character in the novel instead of just simply uh, showing up in the background. So uh, one thing to note, though, about that is that it is definitely a hard balance to strike uh, to try and humanize a villain, as it doesn't always pay off for the audience. Uh, we often prefer to see villains be cut down rather than learn from their mistakes. And uh, kind of as a funny anecdote, when I saw the musical of Les Miserables before the second time, uh, when the actor who played Javert, came out to take a bow, he was actually booed by the audience, which uh, I thought was kind of disrespectful there. So it's definitely hard to uh, kind of give them that redemption and make it satisfying for the audience as well, so just uh, be careful when you're doing that there. So my second villain is uh, rather obscure. It's from an anime or a Japanese cartoon called Psycho Bass. Uh, for those who don't know, Japanese cartoons have a lot more variety in storylines and age range than cartoons over here. Psycho Pass is actually a great anime for adults with uh, excellent sci-fi storyline, and it takes a lot of inspiration from authors like uh, Philip K. Dick, uh, George Orwell, and many others. Uh, the biggest comparison would probably be with Philip K. Dick's The Minority Report, and you'll see why in a moment here. Uh, so, Psycho Pass is set in a future where technology has advanced to the point where everyone's mental state can actually be represented by a number. And the higher the number, the worse your mental state. If your number is too high, then you're considered a latent criminal. And the authorities uh, will find you and take you in and get you psychological help to hopefully get that number lower. If it's higher still then the authorities have the right to take your life as you're considered too far gone for any psychological help. The authorities, who the main character is part of, have a special gun which automatically reads the person's psychopath and will either lock it when it's a low number, shoot a paralyzing agent if it's in the high range, and for the worst uh, latent criminals, it will actually kill them. 
So basically the guns are the judge, jury, and executioner all in one. The villain in Psychopaths is sort of a Moriarty, Colonel Mastermind type character whose number stays low no matter what he does. So even as he's committing a crime, his number won't change, and he won't be considered even a latent criminal, even though he is uh, committing criminal acts. So he is definitely on the opposite spectrum from Javert, as he revels in being a criminal and facilitating others to commit crimes as well. And because of this, he doesn't really have much of a redemption moment either. From beginning to end, he's the bad guy, more akin almost to like a, a big bad like in fantasy novels. The reason why I feel he's a great villain is because he doesn't stray from his course, and that his existence is also defined by the world building. The society is built around the thought that if you do bad things, then your number will represent that, and you'll be recognized as a latent criminal. Yet he's an outlier in every sense of the word. He could have been just another criminal, and it might have still been interesting, but he has major ties to that world, how it functions, and how the other characters treat him. Because his number is low, the characters are forced to question those numbers and what defines a criminal, because the society at that point doesn't recognize him as such. The other issue they have to overcome is what to do with him, as he's clearly a criminal, but his numbers are too low for their guns to do anything, even when he's committing a crime right in front of them. Technically, if you took the villain from Psychopaths out of that anime and put him somewhere else, uh, in some other story, he'd be just another criminal, so it wouldn't really work the same. But in the context of the world building of Psychopaths, the villain is more than the sum of his parts, and actually enhances the world building and the story by giving it questions and obstacles for the characters to overcome just by the nature of him existing. Say if you were doing a vampire story, you could have a vampire as a villain. Unless you add something about the villain and about the world that makes that vampire unique, he's pretty much interchangeable with any other vampire. There's nothing wrong with that kind of villain, but it's hard to make them interesting right off the bat. Uh, you have to work harder to make the villain interesting by what they do and their personality, rather than just by who they are. So, in conclusion, uh, depending on the setup of your story, a villain that is just like any other character in your story, or one that is unique to the world you're creating, are some great starting points for creating a good villain. I hope that you can join us in two weeks, when hopefully Ethan will be back, and we can discuss with him what villain he likes, and what makes them great. Tell us what villains you like in the comments, and why. And once again, thank you for joining us here at Second Drafts Podcast. Please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. And let us know what you'd like to see from us in future podcasts. See you next time. Do you want to support production of this YouTube series? Visit www.patreon.com slash and become a patron today.